The Eureka Specialita is a burr grinder that's focused on espresso, although it can handle grit sizes from Turkish to French press. Zero retention and one-hand operation make for smooth single dosing, and it's moderately priced. It certainly is a good-looking unit, solidly built and quiet. Could this be the ideal burr grinder for serious home users? Is it the champion of the prosumer market? It sure sounds like it. But hang on, this is the Wired Gourmet, and around here, we test claims like those. Oh my god. It's like a miracle. There are two dosing options. You can choose between timed doses, if you like to keep the hopper full, and single dosing by weight. For cafe use, timed is better because it's fast. For home users, single dosing by weight is best because this grinder has virtually no retention. So long as you grind through each dose, the pathway will remain clear. If you switch frequently among several types of coffee, this is the way to go. And when Eureka says zero retention, they're not kidding. That's 10 grams in and 9.9 .9 grams out on a setting appropriate for pour over coffee. We'll look at the espresso grind performance a bit later. It's hard to beat for ease of use. The touch screen is well lit with large, bright characters, and the menu is simple. You can set up two timed doses. Changing them is as simple as choosing either preset, then pressing the plus or minus buttons. It will remember your last setting. To switch to single dosing by weight, press both lower buttons. The donut icon under the decimal place indicates single dose mode. Bump the switch and the timer will count up. Touch it again and it will stop and display the elapsed time. Performance is solid. It will grind everything from Turkish through French press. As with all burr grinders, the coarser you go, the less consistent the particle size distribution will be. But you would have to spend hundreds more on a grinder that will do a noticeably better job at the coarse end, and many hundreds more to see a quality improvement in the espresso range. The grind selector feels smooth. It's spring-loaded, so the thread lash is hidden. Of course, there is lash. You can turn it a bit while nothing happens, but you won't feel it. If you're like me, and you use every brewing method known, you'll find the size adjustment irritating. The useful range involves about three full rotations. It's easy to lose your place and have to start over from zero, which on my machine is three. This is the point where the burrs begin to touch. One whole step, or 60 degrees, brings me into the Turkish range. Another three whole steps puts me in the middle of the espresso range three more steps for the mocha pot, another three for pour over, and now a full turn to French press. Got that? <laughs> now, bear in mind that these are approximate steps. You'll be making minor adjustments at each point, depending on your coffee. I printed a reminder and taped it on top here, but even so, if you forget where you parked it, then it's back to zero, which is, you know, three. There is a Mignon series grinder called the Perfetto, which will go from Turkish to French press in one rotation. And it's clearly labeled, so you can't get lost. But I think it would be a challenge to dial in espresso. I'd much prefer this mechanism with a simple rotation counter. That's hardly exotic technology, and it certainly doesn't need to be precise or expensive. The adjustment knob would have to be bigger to accommodate a ring gear and a cog or two, but that would be a good thing. And of course, you should be able to set it at zero. The spet will grind for espresso at about 2 grams per second. That's fast for a home machine. This is 20 grams of coffee on an espresso setting. Again, you can see that retention is excellent. We get back 19.9 .9 grams in just over 10 seconds. That is unbeatable performance in this price range. The portafilter rest and bump switch make for convenient one-hand use, and they work for mocha pot funnels too. The rest is easy to fit and remove. When it's out of the way, a number two V60 funnel fits perfectly. My Turkish coffee pot fits neatly under there too, as does my AeroPress. 
A small French press would also fit, but I haven't got one to show you. My one liter model is too tall. The machine is easy to clean and service. The top plate is secured with one screw and there's no need for single dosers to remove the hopper. Eureka boasts about its silent technology, which consists of mounting the motor on rubber bushings, as you can see. Cleaning it thoroughly and aligning the burrs are both easy to do, as I'll demonstrate in my next grinder video. Now let's consider a few issues. The hopper is made of cheap plastic that scratches if you look at it wrong. The cover fits poorly and makes a ridiculous noise. <laughs> Listen to this thing. Silent technology indeed. I used a piece of self-adhesive foam to shut mine up. The portafilter rest is laser cut and unfinished. Its edges are uncomfortably sharp, possibly dangerous, certainly disappointing. The grind adjustment knob could not be any smaller and still work. Ideally, it should be bigger and easy to set at zero, and it needs a rotation counter. Closing the hopper valve is an inelegant solution to the popcorn issue, although it does work. The hopper fits snugly in place, but the neck is too short, allowing ground coffee to build up here. Apparently, the engineers neglected to measure it. The top plate and front housing are made of cheap plastic that is not glass reinforced as I would want. The surface is soft and easy to scratch and it shows fingerprints if you so much as wave at it. It is quiet, but silent technology is an awfully pretentious way to say rubber bushings, the effects of which are undermined by a comically poor quality hopper and lid. The Specialita name and Eureka logo are a mere decal. An appliance like this deserves an embossed plate or a badge or some engraving. Grinding for espresso at 2 grams per second is too slow for commercial use. This is definitely a home machine, albeit a competent one with a few disappointing quirks. There are a lot of color and trim options. Check out Eureka's website and play with the configurator. There's a link in the description. No doubt you're wondering about the cost. I bought mine from a UK supplier with whom I had no relationship and paid the retail list price. Including VAT and two-day overseas shipping from London to Dublin, this grinder cost me a total of 375 British pounds, or 412 euros, or 500 US dollars, for the time being anyway. <laughs> It might not be the finest unit available, but it is top shelf in its price range. Very good value for money here. The seller, Bella Barista, had decent prices overall and handled the order without difficulty, and I'm satisfied. I've got no experience with them on returns or after sale service, but there is a link in the description if anyone wishes to check them out. Incidentally, if I should ever accept anything of value, including a discount or even a review sample that I later return, I will always disclose it. You can assume that I paid full retail for anything that appears in my videos unless I say otherwise. Well, that's all for today. In my next video, I'll demonstrate Turkish coffee fit for the fussiest specialty coffee nerds. And in the one immediately following, I'll do a teardown of the specialita and show you how to clean it thoroughly and how to align the burrs. So keep in touch. Cheers.